Hello everyone, and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to begin building my colony on the ground, and to do that, we have to send our colony control center, or at least that's what I'm going to do first. And so here I have it on uh, one of these little uh, integrated module bases. We've got little uh, flexo tubes which work with KAS so uh, the Kerbals will be able to grab one end and connect it to another module uh, and of course it's got the lander legs on the integrated module base this is the actual colony uh, control center pretty expensive stuff altogether you'll notice I've put landing gear on this and that's because right now on top of this we've got a well a tug basically and the tug is going to be moving our colony modules around, or at least I hope it'll be able to do that. Um, it seems to be able to move this around on Kerbin, but you know how that works out. I mean, I'm not entirely sure it'll necessarily be able to do it around the moon. I've uh, tried to make it hefty, so that it does have uh, a little bit of grip, but we know that didn't exactly work for the uh, the. Um, the truck, the tanker, tanker, that's what I called it. And we've got RCS, so hopefully, maybe that'll be helpful, but that's also for other reasons. But, uh, yeah, we are going to see whether this works out or not. It's, uh, this is an empty fuel tank, by the way. It's not actually full of fuel. That was just to extend out the port so that it was beyond the wheelbase of this. Okay, um, and it's got a docking port on top because, of course, it has to be dropped onto the planet with the with the orange, and same with the colony control center. So it's got a clampatron docking port here, and these two are separated by a stack separator. So that's the idea. The first thing we're going to do, though, is we are going to be once again trying to recover our first stage, the Yako stage. And uh, I've come up with a different plan this time. Uh, the plan is, uh, remember I removed parachutes because opening all the parachutes at the same time caused the thing to rip apart. So what I have done is I have staged the parachutes into two separate stages. So only part of the parachutes will be deployed first so that they don't rip the thing apart. And once it's slowed down the whole craft, then we'll deploy the remaining parachutes so that Fair Mirror Space will be happy. And maybe that will be enough parachuting to save this first stage. I have to think about possibly landing this vertically instead of horizontally as we've been doing. But then again, if we end up in the ocean, that probably means that uh, we're going to lose it anyway. So landing it vertically is sort of a land-only proposition for something this big and having this many uh, different parts in this body. So, yeah, that's the problem. And, uh, of course, you know, you say, well, 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 just land it on land. Well, it's not that easy, is it? I mean, uh, it's not the easiest thing to keep enough fuel to try and land this on land. Uh, Falcon 9 has had plenty of practice, but uh, hasn't quite uh, tried land yet, so... Uh, if if uh, SpaceX does it, I'll have to try and do it, but they haven't gotten one down on land yet, so I'm going to uh, hold off on that. And But otherwise, let's try and get our colony on the moon set up, and then we'll have to talk about whether we can get our Kerbals over to it, because remember, they're in a little uh, crater, and so I don't know if the Packrat rover or the tanker can actually get them from their current emergency hab to the colony. So that's going to be uh, another little adventure. All right, so uh, let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, so we're not sending any Kerbals out, and I've noticed a little problem with my staging here. So, yeah, it's all remote controlled. I think everything has a remote controller available, so that's okay. Um, right. Not that the Colony Control Center actually needs one, because the Orange will be doing everything for it. Okay. Yep. Everything looks so good. So... Here we go. Of 
Colony Control Center on the Yakko Wacko Launcher. Very expensive payload, currently looking a little bit sideways, but hopefully it'll catch itself. Don't like that, but yeah, we're going to have to do some contracts to make up for this. And uh, if I get this uh, done like uh, part way through the episode, I'll uh, go and do some contract stuff maybe, just to make some funds need to do some science as well, so maybe we'll pick up some contracts that also have a science side benefit. Now, of course, you recall I had the UI glitching in uh, previous episodes, and I, uh, I haven't changed anything. But I'm planning to do a number of possible things. Um, one is just to upgrade everything to 0.25. And so I have to see whether the save can be upgraded to 0.25. That, that would be the most straightforward solution at this point, I think. Uh, and of course it means that I will continue to get uh, support from the mods. Right now, if I stick to 0.24, if they fix anything, I'm not going to benefit from that. So that's, that's sort of the first option and the one I'm going to test first. Uh, though it'll take some time to test something like that, obviously, otherwise uh, we might lose half of our bases, uh, half of our stuff, and that won't be any good. The second option is uh, just to upgrade FAR, which seems to be the mod that is uh, causing the UI glitch. Um, but FAR, uh, FAR is a complicated mod, and uh, uh, in particular, it's the way it interacts with uh, other things that... It's not so bad in this case, though. You know, I'm, I'm more thinking of, like, in Realism Overhaul, when it's really comp... You know, all the parts are sort of interconnected in a very, very vicious web sometimes. Here, it's not quite uh, so complicated, but... But I still want to be careful about that. The downside to upgrading to 0.25 is that I wouldn't be able to add a B9 Aerospace. B9 Aerospace is uh, still 0.24, though uh, it might be compatible, I don't know. But... But it's not officially compatible with 0.25. I'm not using point, uh, 64 bits, so the fact that 0 0.25 64 bits is less stable than 0.24 is, is not a problem. Okay, jumping the payload pharynx. Okay, so that's that stage. And we will bring that stage down. So. There we go, the stage is there, but we continue with our main mission. Okay, that is sufficient. Okay, we won't uh, transfer this to the moon just yet. Let us uh, turn to our other mission. Okay, very good. We've got 364 units left of liquid fuel, and we can. We're just basically going to be. It doesn't really have SAS on it. Uh, it's, well, barely has any torque. I mean, so we're just going to head on up to Apoapsis. I think we've been doing most of these launches in the night, have we? Seems that way. Because, uh, I, I guess because the Kerbals were uh, losing electric charge and all of that. Uh, we're gonna go right over the this continent, as you can see. Uh, hard to hit land when, when you're trying to boost stuff properly. And I, I don't have any controls, so I'm just gonna have to wait for it to flip around here. 
I'll take SAS off. I don't want it holding it. Well, I might as well just dump the fuel at this point. Okay. Okay, heating. Gotta keep an eye on the parachutes to make sure they don't overheat. Oh, we got a little bit of that, but the spinning is helping with that. Deliberately keeping this thing spinning so that none of the parachutes overheat. Well, okay, uh, that's all of that. Still spinning quite a lot. Hopefully that won't cause problems with the first set of parachutes, which will deploy momentarily. Mock effects. And first set. It's first set. Okay. Alright, well they didn't rip the thing apart, so that's good. Alright, second set. <laughs> I like how they're sort of a barrage of uh, parachutes. Okay. And now we'll wait for them to open fully before engaging the flotation devices. Wow, that's loud. High G-forces. But okay. Looks like 7.2, 7.3-ish flotation devices. Maybe need to figure out how to put a flotation device right here. After all, the center of mass is right here. So, hmm. Oh. Okay. Well, we got the <laughs> we got the most important part. Um. Yeah, this part. Uh, yeah, let's recover vessel here. This this is the part I want to recover. Okay, so as usual, it uh, jumped us back to this mission. And we got a little note saying that we got 23,000 funds back thanks to recovering that part. So that's good. Uh, this, this was more than 100,000 funds altogether. But, uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, good boost. Anyway, so now we plot for lunar transfer. So, partial success. Uh, the, the, certainly a success of the most important part of uh, what we want to recover. The orange is going prograde around the moon, so we have to go prograde as well. There we go. Okay, off we go. Now the one thing is that we want to conserve enough liquid fuel to transfer to fill up the orange of course and I don't know if we're gonna end up with enough after all of this. If the orange doesn't get enough fuel it won't even be able to bring this uh, tug down and we need to then fill up the orange again in order to bring the colony control center itself down so there's two trips down for the orange. Super orange of course. Maybe I should make a new orange that, uh, maybe I should just launch a new orange since that one spins too much. Okay, this is pretty impressive thanks to the fact that my periapsis was uh, close to the, the descending node with um, the super orange. I've been able to combine my orbital burn, my inclination adjustment to the orange, as well as the, the actual um, rendezvous with the orange. So we actually, after this burn, will be within 1.9 kilometers of the orange. Actually, I could probably tweak that a little bit. No, tweaking is probably going to be touchy.
Okay, I better not do any more. Okay, I should be satisfied with just doing that. That's quite a lot. So we'll see how this works out. Do I really care about the other part of this? Hmm. Yeah, I recovered the part I want. Let's let's not do. This is reset, right? No. Oh, whatever. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, that's about as close as I'm going to get from out here. Fine-tuned adjustments aren't exactly the strong suit of this particular second stage. And RCS is limited, really. There's only RCS on the on the tug. Okay. Let us see how to meet up with this fellow. This will be responsible for the retro burn, I think. We don't want the orange to boost up to a higher orbit. That wouldn't be any good. Where is the orange? Okay, that's all I'm gonna make this one do. I'm just gonna have it point at the orange now. And then I'm gonna switch back to the tracking station and then switch to the orange so that we don't have any glitching problem. So, I tried conscientiously to uh, switch to the tracking station before before going to this mission and sure enough the game crashed so uh, no good deed I tell you mainly interested in making sure that we dock up with it before we get on to the dark side of the moon and by dark side of the moon I mean the the part that isn't currently lit by the sun, by the way. I'm not saying that there is a permanently dark side of the moon. That is not what I'm saying. Okay. Hmm. Actually, let's have the Yakko Wacko C C C. Okay, well now I switched uh, without going to tracking station. Oh my! Let's have a turn towards us. Okay, one meter, two meter. Seems close. Okay, it's drifting away a bit. Okay, all docked up. So, now fuel transfer. Mm hmm well that's that's okay on fuel all right uh, well then with that let's uh, separate this out and uh, hmm, I wonder if it's gonna be all right for power while I'm away let me just turn the lights off of there we go this thing definitely Lights on, lights off. Okay. Alright. Now I've done some switching of vessel here. Hopefully that's not gonna be a problem. The main problem I'm worried about now is spinning. And we'll see whether that's an issue. If we take a close look at 
the thrusters you can see they are a little bit off and again it's always with these um, this is an AIES part in this case but the fact that sometimes placing them well, maybe it's not a little bit off maybe it's just the angle that I'm looking at it it's tough to say but it seems a little bit off sometimes the angle is so close that it's tough to fix ah uh, our uh, our sight is in the dark that's no good so it's a question of whether I wait in orbit or I try the descent now well uh, the orange has lights for a reason okay guess maybe now the site for the main base is actually where the carbonite miner is not where our emergency hab is so that's where we're headed I guess we could start our descent burn now huh it's far enough away let's see what the spin point is Well, it seems pretty stable all the way through all that. Okay. Okay, we need to be heading a little bit north here. Now we've got spin. Oh, there goes the UI. Huh, it's when I shut off the engines for some reason. Okay, I'm going to uh, jump back out and jump back in again. Okay, here we are. It worked this time. And... Come on. And we are on a suborbital trajectory. I have to rename the orange to Super Orange. It's got this long name right now, but I can't rename it right now because it's sort of associated with this. Seems to me I just need to load the Super Orange with more torque. Maybe the next iteration of the Orange will have to be that way. So, let's see now. I think last time Smart ASS did a better job with uh, managing the whole situation. And you can see when I turn on the thrusters, Smart ASS is really not doing all it can to counteract this role. Well, now it is. But, yeah, see, it's not doing what it can here. Seems like we need to be a little bit south. Okay, 180, like 300. Come on, the lag. Okay. Holy mackerel. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Not bad. Uh, let's try 225 and more throttle and 85. 
Sorry for the lack of commentary, this is pretty dire as it is. Oops, not that. Oh, our lights aren't hitting the ground yet. Just trying to get rid of horizontal velocity as uh, well as I can. Not easy. Ah, I should have surface info up. Surface horizontal speed is okay. Oh, it looks like we'll be closer than I thought we would be. Okay, now I have to figure out where is the docking port. Right, uh, so when the time comes, I have to undock from there. And then hope I'm co controlling the right vehicle. Should put brakes on now. Maybe hey, then the, the little tug will have its brakes on. Now oh, finally some semblance of light on this situation. Very faint though. So only uh, well within 300 meters of the carbonite miner. It's not bad. Okay, gotta get down on the surface now. Okay, undock. And thank goodness it's the right vehicle heading up. Okay. Uh, 90 pitch 90 execute. God, it really... Super energetic thing, isn't it? Okay, uh, oh crud. Oh, uh, right, uh, that's not the right way around. Ha <laughs> ha uh, hmm, negative 90, thank you. Execute. Oh, I should just, hold on, let me just, come on, you were supposed to control from here anyway. Control from here? Okay, and no, 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 no. 90, 90 now. <sighs> okay, that looks better. Okay, so precision landing in the dark. Now the UI glitched, but th now it's fine. Now I don't mind so much, as long as it wasn't doing it while I was trying to land that thing on the ground. Hopefully it's all right and no wheels have been busted or anything like that. We'll have to see after we get this into orbit. But yeah, in the dark, 300 meters, pretty good. got some fuel left but definitely not enough to to go ahead and uh, drop the colony control center off so we're gonna have to send some fuel over what I really think we should do is create a uh, refueling attachment to our lunar station so that's what I'm going to try next so uh, we'll send uh, such an attachment over and then this uh, the orange can then refuel at that uh, refueling attachment instead of having to get new fuel from everything that comes comes along okay so let's wait till apoapsis okay 
Well, a bit of an inclination and actually should wipe that out. But let, let me see what... Uh, it's possible that this is going to be uh, rendezvousing with the station. So I'm going to let it be for now. I am going to try and rename it. Let's see. Should have put more lights on this thing. Next iteration of Super Orange. Definitely more lights. So this is just Super Orange. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the tracking station and see how our little tug did. It occurs to me at this point that I forgot to put lights in the tug. However, otherwise it looks quite okay. Uh, all the wheels are intact. If we, uh, if we take brakes off and start... Oh. Seems to be getting light from something. Okay, I, I better not try and run around with it while it's while it's in the dark but yeah it looks like it's intact and it's got all its stuff in the dark it's not got much electric charge don't think don't know what's draining electric charge but anyway okay so uh, we'll call a successful delivery though I think we're gonna have to wait until morning to do anything else on the surface we need more light arrays. That's something else we have to deliver. Some sort of uh, lighting arrays so that we can see stuff on the around the base. But I think the next thing to do is actually to create a fuel attachment for Mooner Station, and then refuel the orange with that, and then the orange can deliver the colony control center. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all of that in this episode, but we'll see. All right. So uh, first thing I want to do is actually switch to Mooner station and uh, see where I can dock the fuel fuel extension. So the trouble right now is that we've got these tiny little 1.25 meter docking ports but we haven't actually unlocked the 2.5 meter docking ports in the tech tree yet. So that's the trick. Uh, if we gotta put a huge fuel extension or maybe we could just refuel this tank for now. Yeah, maybe maybe we can just refuel this tank and then the Super Orange can dock up here and then they can be refueled using the fuel in this tank. I think that might be the best solution at this point. Yeah, so we'll do that. Oh, and it's got uh, this fuel as well. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to try and bring up enough fuel to refuel this tank, which looks to be about three of these tanks. Let's uh, create a lifter to get that kind of fuel underway. And so I developed the half moo. For those who uh, watched the episode zero, the intro to the series, you may recall the moo fuel depot, which is currently in orbit around Kerbin. Uh, this is the half moo and of course named after the texture that it's using actually and it is my hope that I can launch this without a fairing uh, I will find out whether whether fair space is okay with that or whether it's going to uh, knock some of these parts off or otherwise make this thing explode it's pretty streamlined except for the lights um, the lights always irritate me but I need some sort of lights to uh, to uh, help with the docking uh, I only just noticed these uh, thruster blocks. How long have they been around? They're, they're pretty neat. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll work out fine. Otherwise, I think this is all fully featured. We even got solar panels up there. Yeah, let's, uh, let's try this out and see if we can get this to refuel stuff in, in lunar orbit. Of course, lunar orbit. Um, but of course, uh, we're trying to make that... Uh, the whole Mooner system be self-sufficient, drilling carbonite and all that. But right now, I think we need to get some extra fuel over there quick, and so this seems to be the best bet. It's pretty cheap. Uh, in fact, it's cheaper. Uh, using one of these procedural fuel tanks with a cost of 4000 is cheaper than uh, using uh, one of these and one of these, obviously. So uh, this was uh, cost-efficient as well as uh, somewhat better looking. Of course, we could change the texture, but since I, I wanted to connect it to the Moo Fuel Depot, so half Moo it is. Alright, so uh, 
yeah let's uh, oh i added the extra flotation device though i haven't figured out a way to save these upper two tanks which fell off last time uh, but we will be trying to retrieve this again so that's in the plans all right so let's try to launch this oh wait i just noticed something i haven't been paying attention to my thrust to weight ratio this is a little bit too heavy for this um actually what i can do is I don't want to mess with the stages too much, but I think in this case we can reduce... Is this not... Oh, okay, it's responding. You can see how little Delta V this adds to the whole thing. Maybe uh, since this tank is going to fall off anyway, I should dump that, this tank. Of course, it changes the center mass a bit, so that's somewhat worrying. Hmm... Uh, this is a bit tight. Let's just go with this for now. Well, it's not going to lift off with the kind of vigor. And we're using the Yakko Wacko Dot too, which is all three stages. I'm not going to lift off with as much vigor as I'd like. It's all these parachutes. Originally, I made the, the three stages without all this parachute stuff. So now, adding all these parachutes and flotation devices... It's uh, changed the balance of everything quite a lot. Hmm. So that's interesting. Maybe I should just not make it recoverable, but then again, uh, I could use that extra 20, 20k worth of credits uh, funds. All right. Uh, so let's. It's barely okay. Let's try and launch it. Okay. So here we go. Uh, SAS is on. Throttle is up. And everything looks okay. Let's try this. Okay, wow, well, it's uh, going up a lot quicker than I thought it would, given the thrust weight ratio. I think maybe Mech Jab was messing with me. So uh, just a uh, note, uh, so I'm, I'm going to try and upgrade this to 0.25 and we'll see, I'll see how that works. I think that's probably the best option at this point. And uh, the trick there is adding in whatever new stuff they had to add to the persistent file in order to uh, make the whole administration thing work, right? There has to be some sort of block of data that is in the persistent file to keep your strategies in order and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, I hope that everything else should be fine. I don't think there were any huge changes in the mods between the two versions. So I, I'm betting on that at this point. Uh, although if there's any huge changes in the mods, then it's probably a no-go. Looking good so far, wondering whether Firmera Space is going to bite my head off with this configuration or not. It's about as streamlined as I could get without using uh, the procedural fairings. Ooh, nice clouds. Very nice launch so far. Yeah, amazingly scenic launch. Love these clouds. One thing I would like is better water textures. I think uh, that could be improved upon. I would recommend that they look into the water textures in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which seem to which which just look a lot better, and they're not too hard. I mean, of course might have an uh, impact on the performance, but not too much. Okay, looking good. The island runway over there. Very nice. So after this, I think I had better look into getting some contracts done. So we might be sending this off to the moon and then 
holding off on uh, trying to get the colony control center onto the surface because I need more funds. I don't want to dip below 1 million funds at this point. So I need to keep some in reserve. So I'm going to maintain a 1 million fund threshold and that means contracts and I don't know, whatever they give us, we'll just have to do them. At least this isn't a uh, hard difficulty or anything like that. Oh, that's probably another part of the persistent file. There's probably a difficulty thing. Okay, we have to reserve that fuel for for the descent, so... Ooh. Those fairings went in a very unexpected direction. I wonder why they would boost that ways. But anyway, here we go. Oh, well, looking good. Looks like this works. Okay, well. Since the second stage didn't have a controller on it, this uh, FMRS did not read it. Okay, that's safely in orbit. Let's go to the other stage. Okay, so here we go. We float up to its apoapsis, which is not that high in this case, because it's carrying a much heavier load this time. And that's part of the reason why I can't aim for land or anything like that, is because the payload changes. And as the payload changes, where it ends up changes. That's a tricky factor here. Some sort of island here. It's an interesting island. Don't really pay attention to that one much. Okay, parachutes, first deployment. Parachutes, second deployment. Now this stage we took out a little bit of mass from this side but since it's an empty tank it shouldn't be too far off hopefully. Okay now flotation devices. Ooh, seems a little bit further on this side this time. That could be dangerous. Yeah, wow, just uh, taking a little bit off that tank, even though it's an empty tank, definitely made a difference to the center of mass. Okay, well, we lost the same part. Except I think we also lost the controller this time. Well, anyway, I'm going to recover this. Unfortunately, it didn't recover that part uh, because uh, the catastrophic failure message came came up. So, and I accidentally misclicked. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't jump back to. I I did jump back to main mission. That's what I did. But I didn't actually recover that part. So, uh, well, while we're here, maybe I should uh, just leave it here for now. I'm, I'm running out of time here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in this state and uh, for now turn to the mission control and the track, well, the tracking station first to recover that part and then mission control.
Okay, so I think uh, this is it. Uh, half move, splash down, splash down right here, and let's recover. Yep. Okay, I trust it gave us the funds for that. Now on to mission control. And so the reason why I'm wrapping up right now is simply because I'm out of time, and uh, so I'm gonna need. The, it's not where I wanted to be at the end of this episode, but I'm going to have to. I'll hold off on anything more until we until I have more time and I can get more done and perhaps between now and the next episode I'll be upgrading my install though now we have a little bit more fun thanks to, thanks to recovering that stage uh, I don't want to do anything more about Ike uh, 1000 is not enough um, maybe we should try and create a vessel to recover a Kerbal and we'll need a specialty rocket. I don't think we can use one of the Yakko Wacko Dot stages. Those are a little bit overpowered. We did create uh, a, a vessel, but that's also very expensive for this sort of purpose. But then again, it's reusable. Anyway, uh, yes, we'll work cover that one. So that's something we'll do in the next episode. Test launch escape system in flight over Kerbin. Um, those are reasonable numbers and it gives us science so I'll take that we'll try that in the next episode and we'll also test the LVN atomic rocket motor in the suborbital trajectory the rest uh, this cluster wow that's a lot of science okay so we're going to be uh, doing uh, fund fund management uh, in the next episode but we're also going to uh, try and complete the whole uh, landing the colony control center on the surface of the moon at the right location but we might as well do these first because if I'm right let's go to tracking station yeah I mean the our our site is still in the dark and it's gotta be in the dark for a few at least a few more hours probably longer than that so while we're doing all these tests and stuff to get funds that will slowly come back into the light and so that's the plan so we don't have to rush things in terms of getting the colony control center down because we're gonna have to end up time warping uh, for this to emerge into the light anyway I'm not gonna try and land the colony control center in the dark so yep I think that's the plan so uh, thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time